I'm going to call the meeting to order January 3rd, 2022, 7.04 p.m., um, the Wakefield Commission on Disability. Uh, just a reminder that the meeting is being recorded. Lois, do you have your flag? Oh, there you go. I just don't see it. Okay. Okay. If we can do the pledge then. I pledge allegiance pledge to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America, America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty indivisible. and justice for all. Yeah. Our mission is to address the needs and concerns of our disabled residents and provide their full participation in the activities and services of Wakefield. And I don't see anybody on uh, for public participation. Um, may I have a motion then to approve the meeting uh, minutes uh, from December 6? I make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of uh, December 6th, Thanks. 2021. Would someone second that, please? I will second. Oh, two people did. Okay, great. Oh. So Lois seconded. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Happy New Year. New Year. Okay, and Lois, same for the financials? Same. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, Paul is not on, so we'll uh, hold on the, the discussion for the MBTA paratransit program. Um, so she can bring us up to date on that when she comes on or at the next meeting. Um, so update on the post office. I got online last week and I completed that online um, application, you know, basically uh, stating our, our concern with the um, inaccessibility of, of the uh, existing post office. Um, and I received back confirmation, you know, an automated message that they have received it and it's in the queue. So based on some of that data I had sent out to everybody, um, this is very common, the entrance to the post office. And it's something um, that the, that organization, now I've forgotten who they are, but it sounded like it was a, um, a federal organization that handles these kinds of things. And it, uh, you know, it's common. They have addressed it before and many post office have been requested to make the change. So I feel like our chances are good. I guess the, the concern would be how many others like us have, you know, gone forward with a similar request. It's probably just um, the, the time it's gonna take for this organization to get to each one and go through it, their process and make a determination, so. We'll, uh, we're just, you know, I, I, I'll go through and it, I'll, we'll wait a couple of months and then I'll go back through the paperwork and see if there's some way to follow up or how that should be handled. Um, let's, so that's, so before we get to the next item on the agenda is the intelligence lives Flyer. So before we get to that, I just, Lois had sent me, and I'm going to try to share my screen. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, I pulled it up. So Lois went to Sardella Sign, and um, they did up a, a little version of the um, banner. And I want to just share it so that everybody can take a peek. Let me see in my breakout rooms, share screen. Okay. Here we go. 
No, I don't know. It's it's really not. Is there some way to make it bigger? Uh, can you folks see it? Yes, we can see it. If you if you do the little magnifying glass kind of towards the top with the plus sign, will that make it bigger? Yeah, that one. See. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so I just um, so it's it's it covers a six foot table. It's kind of burgundy red, white letters, the town seal. Um, it says commission on disability. Do you know? I don't know. Do we want it to say Wakefield Commission on Disability, or well. I can't see the town seal clearly so maybe with the seal it's clear that it's wakefield i'm just thinking if we're in, a, in an event with a bunch of other commissions or whatever you know we, we want to know who we are um and also it's disabilities not disability. that was my question we are it's yep. disability ies yes okay okay so that's one change yeah um Let's see, three-sided cover with back open so you can sit behind it. Polyester, washable, lightweight. So, it, okay, which I think I kind of like the fact that it's not a heavy vinyl and it's a polyester. I think it would be, I don't know, I think it will just look nicer and it will be easier to store. It will drape better too, I think. Yes, I think those Those right. heavy vinyl ones get stiff and sometimes they start to crack. Yep. Now, one of the questions was, do we want to add the QR code somewhere mm -hmm. on here? And I, I so the LaVon, we're going to need your expertise because the QR code, I'm assuming, would go to our website. But yep. we, would, we have to create one to our website first, and then we'd have to give it to whomever is putting to the uh, banner, prepare, making the banner. Yeah, um, I have one that I made. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that, like, I, I think I could just send it to the email address and then you'll have a copy of it. But um, they're really easy to make. You just, you can just Google QR maker and it's just a website that you put in and, and all, literally all you have to do is copy the link to our website, paste it in this little box and then say create and it creates it and you just copy it and it's like it's a jpeg it's a little picture file okay. and it and never can, changes because it's 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 copying it's being correct. created based on the website location yeah it's a unique picture okay so i can send the one i yeah i'll send the one that i have yeah everybody and then you can you guys can check it out to see if it still works but mm -hmm. um i'll send it to you all Thank you. Okay, so um, so this graphic is from Sard Sardella. Um, I learned from um, Bill Renault that you know I I was concerned what the town protocol was to do things like this, right? Do we have to get a certain number of quotes? Did they have a specific vendor we needed to use? Uh, according to Bill, if it's under a thousand dollars, none of we don't have to worry about any of that. So, um, my recommendation is going to be we we get a couple of quotes of the same exact thing. I, I don't have a preference as to vendor. Um, so, yeah. Sardeller is saying about two hundred dollars. I suggest we go to T Stop see if we can give you know ask for the same thing, see what he comes up with. And then we just make a decision as to you know, what we wanna do. I did send Sherry um, an email asking her how, how we pay this vendor, how we'll pay the vendor. I'm hoping it's just, they submit an invoice to, to Sherry on our behalf and she just pays the bill out of our funds, hoping it's that simple. Is this still a banner place that's across from the AmeriCal Civic Center? Oh, no. Blanchard's. Yeah. That's it, Blanchard, yeah. right. They yeah. have all the flags and things there. Yep. Do you want to get a third quote from them? 
we could get three quotes for the same item and then decide from there. That works. And, and did you want to have Wakefield put on it or are we leaving it like this? What's, what's the consensus? I would rather see Wakefield on it so people know if they are doing the QR code, did I say that right? Um, they are doing that, they know who we are and what information they would get. Yeah, I just and think from a distance, if you're in a big, on a field or whatever, and people walk on, when they got closer, they would see the seal in the town, but from a distance, they would, it, you know, the, the, we wouldn't stand out as far as, you know, what commission on disability. So I, I don't know, I, I, I think I would like to see the, at the top, say Wakefield, and then the second line, Commission on Disabilities and I agree. then the seal. I think the seal looks very nice. And the seal could be smaller if needed, I think. Okay. I agree. This is Paula. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I think Wakefield's on the top would look great, but I do like the seal. I think it really adds to it and makes it look more official. Yep. And Bob Sadeller, if I could just say, uh, said that he could do the QR code on there. Excellent. Like in the corner, probably on the top, top right-hand corner or something. I don't know. They would probably know where it would best fit. And they and they probably can make make one because it, it, it could be made by anybody. Just put, yeah, as long as they know what our website is, they can create right. it. Right. Okay, so Lois, do you want me to send you an email with the requested changes? And then um, I think we've got Bob's quote. Do you mind going to Blanchard's to see if they would do it and how much they would charge us? And then see if Rod would do up a thing as well? Uh, well, because we've waited a while for, um, I think of his name. I can't think of <laughs> spoke about um not for but the uh, rod at the but I, I i would just go with this what we have we so we're side yellow signs Before. i don't mind going with sidella i just would like to compare some prices that's all okay uh, we haven't gotten any call back from um, T-Stop um, almost a month. Oh, okay. So, so I, I, he's busy I just, with other things. I just figured that this is a known, this person has been in, Bob Sadella, has been in the, the, um, the Wakefield for 40 some years, so he knows a lot about making signs. So that, that's my thought. Because you, if you wait too much longer, you don't know whether you will get your item that you are waiting for, for this intelligent lives. You know, I mean, I'm just- Get it in time. Yeah. Did he say how long it would take him to turn it around once we gave him the go ahead? How long it would take him to make it? Bob Sadella? Um, yeah. I'm sure it would be, I, I, can, I can call and ask or go over and, and ask. I'm sure it's not going to be a big deal for him. So that's the way I would go, only because we've been dealing with other things with him and he took the time he was doing other things and so he stopped whatever he was doing we were watching him and he said hey this this is not a problem so and where he does it like that you know um 
I mean, to have, I mean, I have, I have a picture right here, you know, obviously with the woman standing there, that's just to let you know um, what, what it would look like, plus the fact the, um, um, the table, the, the, the red, I can't think of the word for, the, um, I can't think of the, the, the word with the, with the information on it, the sign or whatever. I, I think that's a good size. I don't think it's too big. Um, somebody's in the, just whatever, you know, whatever the wording. Um, I'm not totally sure. Um, I'm trying to see on the website whether it does say Commission on Disabilities or. Oh, yeah, it does. Now, this, this one that I'm looking at the, the um, that's, that particular one that I'm looking at is, is wrong because it has issues. And that was, and that was up at the very top, opposite the, um, the Wakefield Town Seal. So. Can you see what I, what I'm sharing, Lois? Can you see that one? That's the one with the woman, the one, yes. one of the pictures you sent me with the woman. Right. Yeah, so. The wording, the wording, the wording on it can be changed. Right, I mean, right. So we would want to add Wakefield at the top, right. then it would say Commission on Disabilities, which may cause the seal to have to be a little smaller if he's gonna, you know, Okay. Add another line, and, and that's perfectly right. fine. And in, in regard to the QR code, do we want to make the changes to the website first? Because if you um, take the URL, it still says Wakefield Commission on Disability Issues in the URL, and obviously on the website. So you know, if you if you capture that and associate that with the QR code and then we change it. No, Janice, that, that won't matter because okay. when the website gets changed, it's not gonna change the link and the QR code is just is really just a link. It, it's very similar to a link that you click on. Mm -hmm. So unless we change the actual like um, address, right. right, it's gonna, the code is just, going to take you to the website. So if we make any changes to the website, that's not going to affect the QR code at all. But it's not linked to the URL for our website? because Yes, it URL, is. And that's, it, that's why if we change the website, it's not going to matter. But the changing the website, don't we want to change the URL to say Commission on Disabilities? Right now, the URL reads wakefield.ma.us front slash commission on disability issues dash one. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So if we change the website, okay, then get in, then that will give it and change the UR. I think we want to change the URL, whatever it is, because you can designate the, the URL and do yep. like one of those easy URL things. So you know what I think we should do? is not have the QR code put on there because anytime that link changes, then that code's not gonna work. So what we could do is just have them put on, have it put on a label or something and stick it on mm -hmm. after the fact. That's a good idea. Then the, then the label could get changed and taken off. But I, I, now that you said that Janice, that makes sense and it, and it doesn't, it, I don't think it's a good idea to put the code on there permanently. For that reason, mm, I didn't think about that. That's, I think you're right, Levon. I agree with that. Good, good point. And so, and right, if we're going to make those bookmarks. Right, that's what I was just. We are going say. to we make the bookmarks. We could adhere it to this banner, especially where it's cloth material somehow. Yeah. And we can just hand somebody the Q, the bookmark if they're right. looking for the QR code, yeah. and that's okay. Handy. 
So no QR code. I think that's a good call. And banner. All right, and I'm gonna send Jen McDonald from the town an email to make that change to our website. Right, the title of the website and then throughout. You, you could also, I'm sorry, go ahead, Lewis. I'm sorry. You could also use a piece of Velcro to put over mm -hmm. that temporarily until we have it all straight. That's a good idea. And then if it ever changes, you just change the Velcro. Yeah. From. yeah, you know what I mean? Um, do you want me to go through the website and find the places if there are others that say commission on disability issues and ask Jen to make the changes? That would be great if you- Yeah, have we have to do to that do all that. the time with our state website, which is not up to date, by the way. Um, we have to go through and make the changes and I'll ask her how she wants, if there's a form or any particular way that she needs to have the changes okay, yep. in order to, you know, does she need the breadcrumbs and all that kind of stuff to do that? Um, so I'll get in touch with Jen. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. All right, thank you. That was good dialogue. So yeah, we don't do anything to mess it up. So no, what, do we, what is the consensus then? Do we want to have a QR code where we, where it's not permanent on the banner and like Lois suggested, just be able to stick it on somewhere or do we want to just skip it entirely in regard to the banner? Oh. I would like to have the QR code on there. I mean, that would help people if they're interested. They like our. Cell phone. We could also use a cell phone, you know. But mm -hmm. it could even. Well, we could. I think we could just print one out and laminate it. I have like a, a home laminator, so I could always print mm -hmm. out like one that's the size of a page of paper or smaller and and laminate it and then like lois said put velcro on it and it can come on and off yep so we would do that ourselves levon we would yeah. we could just get our own velcro and stick it on and yeah i yeah, i okay. have all the as a teacher i've got loads of velcro <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so i'm velcroing all the time so we got all velcro right. we got lamination all set so just all right. one okay. one question about this um I would think that once you change the website to reflect the proper name and the proper URL, it likely wouldn't need to change again. So if you were to put it on the banner and then it did for some reason change in a time period where you were still using the same banner, could you just then do what Levon's saying and put the laminated piece over top of it so that it, you would have it done mostly in the beginning and you would only have to do the laminated piece if it were to ever change in the future. Okay, can I just ask a question? Um, when we had the, um, help me, I'm trying to think of the word. When we had our name changed, how yes. did it actually come out? So in other words, Commission on Disabilities. Commission on Disabilities. Yeah, let's see if I have the um, town meeting. I'm just trying to make sure that it does come out as Commission on Disabilities. Disability, not S, yes. not IES in other words. I just want to make sure if it's done correctly. So it says to rename the Commission on Disability Issues. Commission on Disabilities. So, so that as revised, the said provisions will read as follows Commission on Disabilities. IES or Disability? IES, yep. Commission on IES. Disabilities. Okay, I, I, I wasn't aware of that. 
Yeah, and I mean, we just, I mean, look that, at that little yellow booklet that you sent, you gave everybody, if you look at some of, if you go and look at all the other commissions, it, it some of them say commission on disabilities, some of them say commission on disability, we voted in the meeting minutes to commission on disabilities, so. Interestingly, our agenda on the website for today says disability commission. <laughs> <laughs> just no just to add more uh, okie dokie. yeah well commission it, well actually the agenda that yeah. i printed out says commission on disability it's issues it's issues right yeah but that's, that's yeah know. that's from um that's from the uh town right the town yeah the town okay so we need to um what about Lorna, what about, when you send the next uh meeting um agenda yep. You just make a note in your email to whomever at postings and tell them to please make that change. Yep. So Jen McDonald would probably be involved with that since the change has already been made and you don't want to go against one thing to another, you know, another. another well, word. I'm sure that nobody paid attention to that, right? Jen McDonald has no interest in that name change noise because the person who does the postings at town hall. So we just have to bring it to people's attention. They probably aren't even aware that that happened. Last item on the um, on the warrant article, people had left or had fallen asleep by that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, but it's I, not a big deal. We just have to bring it to people's attention. They just, you know. They so just take last month's meeting agenda and update it and yeah. And when we post the minutes, it will have the, the, the correct name on it. Right. So everybody who's doing those tasks, just, I guess, be aware and take a quick look and anywhere that you need to update, update, and then just bring it to whomever's attention you're sending it to so that they'll be aware as well. May take us a couple of tries, but it so will get changed. So Commission on Disability. Disabilities, IES. IES, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So do we want to get another quote or do we want to just go with Sardella? I'd like to get another quote. Okay, so it's out there with Rod. If he doesn't, he doesn't sound like he's responding. So let's just go to um, Blanchard's and see if um Blanchard's no, gonna be high. He's gonna be high. Well it, then it is the then price. we that's how we make our decision. We we present whatever we get and well excuse me how about sign around i don't have any pro any I, anybody you know that you want to go get a quote from i have no i don't have any preference but th this was not this one looked nice so we you know now we've got something to compare it to right um, I, this one looked very nice so yeah where is Sinorama? is that in town too i'd like to keep the business in town if we can it's uh it's right on uh lincoln, lincoln street it's right right on the main oh, drive. right yep i know yep. where you are going yep. yeah yeah Mandy. All right, so sign sign a rama. So I can go. Yeah, wh wh wherever there. you think will give us a good price, and we'll do it. You know, we'll be comparable to Blanchard, so that we're comparing apples with apples, basically. So, um, what what what's the depth of that? It's six feet long, but what's the depth of it? It looked maybe about three feet. I couldn't tell with it how tall the girl was that was standing beside it. So. <clears throat> six by six. Yes, hit the floor. Oh, hit the floor. In other words, when you're sitting on sitting on a chair in front of you, the, the, the rest from the fall down of the the red that will show then the, well, I'm not supposed to do this, am I? But well, we this is two and a half this, feet, Lorna. Yeah. Three and a half feet. I thought it might be about three feet. I wasn't yeah, sure. We'll probably. go down to the more or less the floor so you don't see the people's legs. So it will show on the other side. Three 
three-sided. Right. Right, so how do you down the front it? and then the two sides. So however tall a six foot banquet table is, that would be how high mm -hmm. it is. How does it, it attach to the table? It goes over like a tablecloth. So it's really four sided or? Yeah. You're saying it's three sided, it's, but wouldn't it be, four, wouldn't that make it four sided? Yeah, I would, how, so how would it attach Lois if it is only three sided? It's gotta have a, um, can, it's gotta can have. Dan, can Dan just say something about sure. that? Sure, yep. Approval for. Dan, to talk? Yes. One second. Dan. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, I think there, I think code for a table like it's 36 inches. And that's what that would be. And it's three sided. In other words, it's got a side on the left, a side on the right, a front, and then a top. And it's the back so it opens so it sit have a top. with your feet under the table. So, so, so it's four sided. Four -sided then. It's, it's four sided. You can get right? four, but then you can't put your feet under the. In no, other words, I meant you can't He's no, not counting the table, this, the piece that goes across the table as a side? No, that, that's what What's they call the three-sided and four-sided. I think on that other okay. example, the actual price is different. But yeah, we four certainly sides, don't need it. We, we don't need it coming down towards the back. So it yeah. sounds like it's a tablecloth and it goes. And it gives you room to store stuff underneath and right. nobody gets correct. That's a great idea. I've never heard of one of those. They actually make a model that the front part goes under the legs. And on that second page that we showed you, I think the other part is just as good, but you're paying an extra $95 just to have it under the, the legs of the table. That's probably so it doesn't blow away if it's windy. Yeah. But that- We'll just put a rock on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll figure it out. And you know, when he talks graphics, he's talking like the QR code, that is part of the whole graphics that he had put it on there. And, you know, if you wanted to put Velcro, you know, put Velcro. You can always put that right on top of the other QR code that's already there. But uh, Bobby Sardella was very inviting to us, told us everything, showed us. None of these companies really make these on premises. They basically send them out yeah, and they're made. So the, the price is gonna be kind of similar. Um, we'll check with down Link we're right next to Lincoln Street. So we'll check with Sinorama um, and check what his prices are. Sometimes he's pretty good. He's also local. All those four places are local. So right. that's what you right. have to get is a well, place in Wakefield. Yeah, Especially we give the, the way things are. to somebody in town, I would think. Okay, okay. so we're gonna- Big thank you for me butting in, but- Thank you, I appreciate the um, explanation. So we're going to change, looking at what we had in front of us as an example, we're going to change the word disability to disabilities. Okay. Um, and no issues, right? Correct. We're okay. going to, we're going to go, we're going to get a quote from Sinorama. Mm -hmm. And what do we decided for the QR code? Yeah, on or no? I would say on. It'd be part of the graphics anyway. Of it's what that is, is like a silk screen that they put on. That's why it's, you get the color on everything. Right, but the question is, what if we needed to change at some point in time? Then you could take, like she said, with the Velcro, just make a little square and just put it on top. And it would probably, the Velcro would probably stick to it better. Oh yeah. And do we want to wait until we change the website so that yeah. the website has the right name? There's no hurry. I don't think you're going to be doing anything outside or inside the next no. January, February, or March. I don't think so. All right, so I'll work on that right away and see okay. how long it takes Jen to, or whoever, make the changes. I'm so, I was going to say, who's going to get the quote? Who's going to get the field? That was the other thing. We want to add the word Wakefield. Right. Yeah. Who's going to follow up on the second quote? I'm sorry, I missed that. Lois and Dan, or Lois. Okay. Sign so around on, on Lincoln Street yeah. in Wakefield. Key Stop, we've already been to. Um, Bobby Sardella, Sardella Signs is the one that gave us this. And then we'll go to uh, Sign Around on Lincoln Street. 
And those all three are Wakefield companies. Yeah, okay, that's good. And how long does it take to um, change the stuff on the, um, with, is it Jim McDonald? Probably not long. It will just be, you know, depending on how busy she is and when she can get to it. But I'm sure it, okay. once she does get to it, it's probably not going to take much time at all. Okay. No, I, I was just asking for my, you know, so I can get on top of this and get it squared away. And yeah, you got a month. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Janice will work it. So we'll, we'll get it done quickly. Okay. Did I see? Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other comments on the sign on the whatever tablecloth <laughs> banner? <clears throat> Paula, did you want to talk a little bit about that MBTA paratransit program? Sure. Um, I it was interesting that they they reached out. The uh, Worman Linda, I've worked with uh, for a number of years. So what? The program is is it's something that's funded by the um, MBTA, and you can get travel training to and from specific locations. So I know some people who have like used it to learn how to get to and from their work location, or to and from you know like various recreation events and things like that. And they go. Um, you know, actually, I know of a couple of people in Wakefield who have used it and, you know, even where maybe like the bus doesn't run. I'm just thinking of, um, I live out by Montrose and there's not a whole lot of bus that, you know, you have to walk a mile to the Dole Bear. Um, and so they practice like, well, what would you need to do if you were walking? You know, what kind of clothes would you need to have on? What would you need to be aware of? Not all streets have sidewalks on both sides. So they go over that. Um, I think it's mainly uh, like a Boston program, but I know that um, they've definitely worked with people in Wakefield and they're usually at like the local transition fairs and things like that. Um, we could in, I could invite the woman to come and speak if people would be interested. Um, it's usually like a 20 minute um, kind of talk that, that she does. Okay, well, we'll put that on. Um, I'm going to add that to our, our like action list because I, I before we have any other speakers come in, I want to make sure we're we wrap we are in a good place with intelligent lives. So that's absolutely where I'd like to be able to spend our time. But that's that is a good in that uh, a good point in. Um, the folks over at Post, I bet they do know about it, but might be worth mentioning to them. Is that something we would want to add to our website, add a link to our website? Absolutely. In this next round, I think yep. absolutely that would be a that would be a great idea. I mean, and maybe it's something um, just in terms of, you know, um, independent lives. I'm thinking, you know, do they do they have a table there? Um, I just feel like tra uh, transportation is often a huge barrier to to people participating in things. Maybe that's something to think about as well. That so that's an interesting point um, that you make because uh, in the lobby, would we want to have some? I'm just thinking about the the time because we're not going to have an intermission or anything I don't think right so would would we want certain groups to maybe be allowed to set up a table in the lobby like this might be one example or is that just getting too that just complicating things too much I can't I don't know I can see it both ways um you know maybe yeah, I was thinking, well, could we have them set up ahead of time so that they don't have to stay the whole time? But then I'm thinking we haven't really set the stage kind of for our mission. Um, right. So that, All right. so let, let's keep that in the back of our mind. 
um, let me write that on our list of. I'm about to ask a question. Um, Paula, do you have the name and number of the place? It's doing. Yeah, I can. Um, I can send you that information for sure. Okay. It's Linda Salzer. I believe it's S A L A Z A R. Um, First name? Linda. Oh, Linda. I'm sorry. I miss nope. Linda. Okay. Uh, but I can get you her, her information for sure. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Okay, so now let us um, look at the flyer that um, I think it was Levon created, right, for us at um, our last meeting. Let me, okay, share. Hmm. Is it too long? Hmm, why can't I find it? Do you want me to share my screen, Marie? Yes, because I have it up, but I'm wondering how is it, it's showing as a PDF, but my screen is not letting me see. Oh, here it is, I've got it, I'm sorry. Okay. I've got it. Here we go. Can you see the flyer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one thing that struck me is, so I, I think I've secured the Galvin from 6 to 9.30. My thought was we would end at 9, that would give us 30 minutes to, you know, to get out of there, whatever we would have to do, really, break down, you know, take our tablecloth off and pick up the stuff. And I and I, my thought was that this thing would go to from seven to nine, and then we would have a little time on the front end and time on the back end to set up and clean up. What are people's thoughts? Paula, how you said this is 70, the presentation or the film itself is 70 minutes long? Correct. And then I think we were going to talk a little bit about um with the uh, different speakers how much time we were going to give them um but i definitely think two hours just for people's attention and you know uh, or maybe even six thirty, so we have some time at the end for questions so running for the six six thirty to nine to nine We could do like brief introductions and then show the movie and then have the panel conversation with some time for questions. Yeah, I think that's right because I mean, you wouldn't, even though you say 6 30 is the beginning time, it's not going to be actually the beginning time of the movie. Um, right. Yeah, there'd have to be some introductions beforehand and and then the movie, and then the time for Q and A's after that. So yeah, I think probably if we state six thirty to nine, and if we if we end before nine, we end before nine. Right. I'd rather have the I'd rather have the extra time than having the janitor kick us out when we're in the middle of some, you know, deep discussion. Right. So right. So my next question is. We have a list of organizations, you know, Biddy and Bowes, Stop and Shop, Market Basket, et cetera, that we want to invite. Is it, is it the intent to send this invitation, the flyer, or I, I was thinking we needed to do some kind of a, a, a letter. I mean, we could include the flyer, but I'm thinking we need to have something in writing. I agree. I think this flyer would be great for the schools. I think it would be fantastic. I think for like um, maybe if local businesses could hang it up um, and if we could include this, but I think, you know, like a more 
I don't know that personalized is the right word, but just, you know, something in writing um, to get those businesses involved, I think would be, would be helpful. That's just my perspective. Yeah. I, I have a question. Those that um, we hope for them to be on the panel, one of us or two of us or three of us, whoever, are going to go and talk to them personally and invite them in person, correct? Before we send out any invitations, right? Is that is that your recommendation? You think we need to? I think that we need. I thought that you know that we had some contacts at places that, you know, um, someone once gave the name of somebody at Shaw's that we could yep. go and talk to at, you know, and explain what we're doing and would they would they consider being part of that panel? Because otherwise we're looking for, if we send out invitations, it's, it just seems like we're asking them to, you know, volunteer without someone from the, from the commission talking to them. I think I was thinking of two different things. I think Lorna, you're exactly right. We had, you know, specific people that we were going to reach out to for the panel, but I think it would be great for businesses in town to know more about all of the benefits of hiring people with disabilities. Oh, um, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, right. Okay. I, so I was talking more specifically towards the people that we would ask for um, to be on the panel as opposed to the general um, uh, business population. Okay, so I, I, would t I said I would talk to Biddy and Bose. Paula, you were going to reach out to the job coaches there at Communitas and then uh, a contact at Whole Foods and Melrose. Um, Darcy was, again, Darcy was going to reach out to Shaw's, to Matt, who is the manager at Shaw's. So that leaves Stop and Shop, Market Basket, Walgreens, CBS. I mean, we don't have to include all of these. What's what, you know, does anybody have any contacts at any of those places? Or do we want to just pick one out of those four? And, and then we would have, um, if everybody were to respond, we would have one, two, three, four that we know of, right? And, and and four businesses is probably sufficient, correct? I agree. I mean, I think like one grocery store, maybe Walgreens or CVS, just to talk about their experience. All right, and then so we would have Whole Foods, we would have Biddy and Bows, we would do Shaw's, um, and then try to do the Walgreens or CVS. Is anybody interested in connecting with either one of them to, to, to have a conversation? Do we have a contact person at all of them? That, do we know anybody's name? I know that Walgreens um, has like a specific corporate program for people with disabilities, um, but I don't know anybody at the Wakefield location. The same thing with, with CVS, um, the person I knew who worked there, I think both of them are no longer there. Yeah. All right, then let's start with what we have. We've got four organizations so far. Well, we've got three, the Whole Foods, Shaw's, Biddy and Bose. Um, I feel like Market Basket is somebody we might, you know, mm -hmm. want to reach out to. Paula, do we know of anybody? Um, I don't, but I can find out. I know there have been people in the past, but I, I can absolutely find that out. All right, if you can, yeah. So let's just go with that. And do we um, do, do we need to like write up a little, um, the main points that we want to state when we approach these organizations as to, you know, what is it we're asking them to do, I guess is my, is the question, you know, the little elevator pitch that we want to give to them when we call them or meet with them.
yeah, I think that um, that makes sense. Are we gonna have, we're gonna have them. I think we, well, maybe we didn't talk about it last time. Just thinking about um, like a little bit about their, you know, a little bit about what they do, their experience with having people with disabilities at their store and all the, the positives. Um, and maybe if they had like an inspiring story to share. Okay, so um, for the, this is what I had written down. Question for the employee, what is it about your job that you like? Um, why do you like working? Why do you think it's important? What do you think is important about having a job? What do you think makes a good employee? Um, and to the employer, what are the, what are the benefits of this person as an employer employee? What do you think makes a good employee? And then you suggested um, an inspiring story. Okay. All right. So this is something. Um, back to my sheet here. So that would be Paula, Darcy, and me. Um, if we use the flyer and then those questions, do we? Do you all feel that you that you have enough information to be able to approach these folks and make the ask? I guess you know we we would be asking them to be an employee, a, um, a member of one of the employers to be present a representative of the employer to be present, as well as for them to choose an employee that they would like to have present. So somebody they feel, um, you know, it would be somewhat articulate and able to answer the questions. And of course we would provide the questions ahead of time. I think that sounds great. I right. Darcy, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, so do we think we can, um, right now we're planning, well, uh, right now we're planning another meeting on what, the 17th? Yeah. Um, do we, you know, do we think we can at least reach out before that meeting to just get a get a sense as to whether these companies are on board or not. Absolutely. Okay. I mean we don't yeah, have no problem. Yeah, just to be able to report back by the next meeting what what was, you know, what kind of feedback did did we get from the employers? What were their reaction? You know, were they, yeah, I want I would love to do this or is it going to be like pulling teeth? Um, cause I think that's gonna, you know, that will make a difference as to the direction in which we take on this. Um, in regard to funding this, um, there, Sherry Dalton made it very clear and I was able to confirm with the school department that they are not going to require us to pay for any of this that they are gonna consider us part of the town. That's great. So that is, yeah, that's gonna be huge. So, that, so this won't be costing us anything. Um, so I think then the next things we have to work on is I need to work with Bill and um, Jen to get, the, the um, online application and registration up and running. And Are we also changing the times on this on this um, uh, flyer to six thirty to nine? Yes, we can change the. Um, Levon, do you mind updating? No, that? I already changed. I already changed okay. them. Beautiful. And um, it really the, looks nice. Oh, thank you. Um, the printing, can we get this printed at the town hall? 
Do they have color printing? Or we're going to just have to send it electronically to whomever and each organization would have to do print out their own. That could be another option. Do you have any idea how many printed copies you would want? Because um, we could get it done at uh, Staples or something like that. So that was thinking too. So we have the commission website, we have the documentary website. And again, the commission website, if that changes. And I'm thinking we might need this. to get the registration website on here, right? Yes. Does the town do that, Marie? Um, the town events or how do they? How do you set up the registration? What is it? Through? It's, I'm going to have to, Bill Renault sent me an email for some application. I'll share it because um, I read it through once and I kind of was like, you, this seems a little bit complicated. He said it's not. He said they would help with it. So um, I think what we need to do is we need to come up with um, what the registry, what should be on the registration? Why don't we um, make another tab here? So if we, um, I don't know, is anybody registered for anything recently that they could pull up and just take a look at? Obviously they, they're asking you for your name, your address, you know, your contact information. Are you gonna ask folks for an email? Yeah, 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 because we're, we're definitely gonna need contact info for, you know, contract tracing purposes. Um, that would probably be the primary. Um, number of people attending, right, because if, Jane Doe is registering, but she's bringing her husband or something. We want to um, number of people in there, probably their name. We want their, you know, how, how did you hear about, how did you hear about this? Marie. Yes. Lois here. <laughs> um, what about um, putting some little article in the item so people who do have people with disabilities, is that going to make things? Yep. Let me go back to see where I um, listed. You can get it on the, you know how they published put the events in the item of upcoming events, we could. But an actual article might. No, I think, I think you're right, Lois. I think we should definitely should do an article and then we okay. can also throw it into the events list that they have. I think it'd be a great idea to do an article. Yeah, so we would do, we would do an article in the item. Um, we, we would reach out to the Council on Aging. Bella would handle the high school the town uh, social media page, and, uh, Facebook and Twitter. We would do our personal social media. Um, we would send it to the Commission on Disabilities in Surrounding Towns. We said the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Wakefield Special Ed PAC. I had written down here, um, there's a gentleman who lives in Melrose. He's a resident of Melrose, but he also works for the Institute of Community Inclusion. Um, I thought he might, you know, if I reached out to him, he would be able to advertise it through his channels as well. So now we wanted, to, we've got an article in the item. What other suggestions? 
the independent living center that covers Wakefield. Okay. Is that Lynn that covers Wakefield? The independent living center that was in Lynn? I don't know, but did it move to Salem? Is it the Northeast Salem. Yeah. NILP? NILP is up in Lawrence, I think. I don't even know which ILC covers Wakefield. I know that it used to be in Lynn, but I don't know if it's moved. I mean, I know that the, yeah. I believe it's in Salem. I could, we yes. could definitely invite, send it to them. Let's see. We got it in this little yellow booklet that Lois gave us. Uh -huh. It's got a ton of resource information. Um, Worcester. Marie, if you stop sharing your screen for one minute, I can share some the up, some, a few updates I just added to this. Okay, great. And I had one question. Are we required to put disability access information on the flyer? We have to do that at our office. If we advertise something, we have to say, if you need an accommodation and it includes the wheelchair and ASL interpretation, you know, those icons. Um, so for this particular thing, I think it would be great to include that information so that people know that the Locations accessible. Okay, so then what? Um, how do we get back to the? Marie, can you give me access? Uh, allow me to share my screen. Oh, sure. Yep. The Disability Resource Center. Does that sound familiar in Salem? Yes, I believe that's it. Yes, okay, they are the ones that they serve Wakefield. I would like to make one suggestion because I do a lot of um, accessible literacy work. I would suggest that the font with the serifs on it is difficult to read. If you look at the bottom right, the social distancing registry and all of that is much simpler to read it without, um, in, in a different font, I think would be easier. I think, I think that's easier to read. I don't know what other people think. Maybe my eyes are just older. What was it and what are we changing it to? I'm just curious what, oh, did, you're gonna just go to Ariel, okay. Yeah, I think, I think that's a little, I think that's easier to read. So I added, this is just what, it, I mean, this is, I can cool. take this out, but I added what it would look like. That's the QR code that I made, but I can change it and take it out easily. I added this here for when we're gonna have a registry, registry and I'll put the, the information here. Um, I put this down here. Please contact us at blank if you need an accommodation. I don't know if that's, if there's a better way to do that. Well, for now, we can pop in um, our, our, um, I'm trying to get to my documents here. Our email address? Yeah, I would just put our email address. Okay. And then, yeah, I think that would make the most sense. So that's disability commission at wakefield.ma.us. Right. You're fast.
Okay, so while Vaughn is doing that, um, let's go back to the registration. What is it? What other information do we want to collect on this registration? You can ask on the registration as well. Do you need any accommodations? Oh yeah, good idea. If so, you know, please describe. Okay, anything else? Seems like a short list. I feel like when we register for things, we get asked a million questions. I'm wondering if just for like the sake of the panel and the conversation, if we wanna have um, like person with a disability, parent, teacher, employer, just so we have a sense of like who signed up. I don't know okay. if that would be helpful. That's a good you idea. You can also add, do you have any, there will be a panel discussion after the film. Do you have any questions? Um, sometimes people are too shy to ask questions when they get there. Um, so maybe nobody will write in, but maybe people will and we'll have some questions in case the, uh, you know, the audience is quiet. We can say we got some questions by email. I think that's a good start. I'll start I'll start to go through the information Bill sent me and see if that this is something I can create on my own or if I'm going to need their support. Um, and maybe the maybe the software will give examples of questions as well. All right, we are making good progress. Marie, one other suggestion to maybe put on the list of tasks is I think we should, um, when we post this to social media, we should post the PDF. And all of the links are hot links on this flyer so people can click on it right from here from this poster that if we post this poster online, they'll be able to click on all those links to register, to go to our website, to email us, all of that. Okay, good. That's a good, good point. I'm going to highlight that. I'm just going to share real quickly one more time because I want to show Janice something. Down the bottom, Janice, what do you think about that? I'm talking with my mute button on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Every day that happens. Um, I think it looks great. You're very fast. <laughs> I, I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it, I, Yeah, I think it looks great. I love having the little flyer with all the award things on it right there that's really it's good right and the fact that those links will be live and you can just click on them um even better yeah okay so um I, I think right, i've so, got a question <laughs> sure um in order to register they have to click on a link right right and ideally that link will take them mm -hmm. to this registry uh, this um electronic registration site that we're going to set up 
Okay, so the link itself will be actually, you know, it'll be www dot something or other, right? That that will be on the flyer so that people. I was thinking that I mean we can be putting some of these flyers around town into stores and things like that, so they need to have a a um, actual um, URL um, address. Yeah, you know, they have to re- to and be able to enter able- it into their computer. Do people have to register in advance or can they come to the door and provide the information that? Well, it, I think part of it is we need to, um, and who knows where this is going, right? But we need, if we're going to be able to offer social distancing, what does that mean? Right. What it, what does that mean in the Galvin? Like, I, I don't know what the town requirements are, are right now when um, back in, was it November or October when the high school did their musical, um, masks were required, but there was no requirement for uh, seating. There was no spaces between seating. Um, people were given tickets. I think I had, pre, you know, pre seats and you sat and there was, you know, not necessarily a space next to me in the next group. Now that wasn't a requirement back then. But if we are going to say we're going to social distance, what does that mean? You know, maybe we can't say that because then what we're going to be there taping off seats and if so we need to know ahead of time how many seats are we going to tape off how many seats are going to be available how many people can we allow to register has anybody done something where they've done social distancing at galvin do we know that's a really good question about yeah now now that we're having the discussion i mean um yeah, let, let's just say this is a hugely popular event mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and the place is packed. How, you know, I don't know. I just recently went to a wedding. I was really excited. Then we got in there and I saw all the people and I looked at my husband and said, hmm, I'm not sure that this is a good idea. And of course, then he gets COVID from the wedding. Oh. So. And I just, you know, I've justified it. It was someone close. I wanted to be there. It is what it is. But yeah, I mean, what what do we do? Right now, the town's not putting any requirements on us. They didn't say we had to do anything. If it's probably masks are going to be required. Marie, when did you go to a live town meeting when you went? Mm -hmm. Were they distanced in any way? Right, but the chairs were set. The chairs were were set up in advance in such a way that uh, you know there was spaces be- between front and back of you and alongside mm-hmm. of you. So they set that- the chairs up that way. Now we're not going to have an option to set chairs up because the get you know the chair the seats mm-hmm. are are fixed. Um, we would have an option to, to, but how can you even do that? How can you even you don't know if people are coming in a group of two and a group of four. How do you even, to me, that seems like it's going to get way too complicated. Mm-hmm. I wonder we, if we just say something. Oh, sorry, Janice. Like we're going to follow like the current CDC yes. guidelines yeah. or the yeah. current town guidelines, just because I know that even in the last week they've changed significantly yes. or, you know, like this, the Commonwealth, you mm-hmm. know, we can pick some governing body and we're going to follow those current protocols so that we don't have to follow the state of massachusetts whatever the governor issues um which is going to have to follow whatever the town of wakefield is. and the town can be more stringent than the state they can't be less stringent so we could put a there could be a mask law in wakefield when there isn't one statewide um right now there's indoor masks that that that's back. Um, but we could even ask, I don't know if it would be sufficient to say to people, you know, please sit a distance from, please leave six feet 
between you and the other people in your row, but that doesn't mean there won't be people right behind you right. breathing on you. So, you know, we say, you know, sit with your party and leave at least three seats between you and the next party. But you're right, if this is hugely popular, we'll run out of room. I, I think we'll, we'll probably know that through registrations. So we'll have a, a feel for it. Um, and if it starts to get really crowded, we might have to have a plan B. I'm sorry, I don't know if this was ever discussed, but is there an option for a remote attendance? It's a great question. Yeah, very good question. Um, Paula, what, well, I guess, I guess from a legal standpoint, right, we, we have already shown the film in this forum and it's, it, that we had to offer it as public. Anybody could have called in from the public if they did not. Um, and at some point we're gonna have to post it uh, as part of our meeting minutes, um, or it's part of, it, it, it was video recorded. So at some point we'll have to post it. So from a legal standpoint, I don't know, can they prohibit us, Paula? Is, I don't think so. And, you know, if we say that we're doing it for educational purposes, that seemed to kind of gain a lot of um, ground because we're not, you know, distributing it for marketing purposes or for money making purchases. We're, you know, distributing it to educate the public. The public. Okay, so answer that question. Was that you, Kate? I, I didn't see because I was. I had a question. We could just, yes, Lois, one minute, uh, let me please um, finish my thought. We could, we, it, we could potentially do that, I suppose, if um, we would then have to have, we would then have to have somebody in the auditorium though, you know, videoing the whole thing, which, we weren't planning on doing right now. But Can WCAT do that or one of the high school students that's, you know, involved in video production? I suppose that that's possible. Well, I'm really yeah. hoping that come April that we have already gotten through the worst of this Omicron. Yeah. Um, and barring any more mutations coming through, um, that we might be just doing it at, a, at an ideal time. <laughs> right just as things are opening up or have been opened up for a little bit. That's my hope as well. I think the one concern we had with when we were gonna use WCAT before was um, that they might show it again and that wouldn't necessarily be educational purposes because I know we had talked about using them at the beginning. I'd have to look back at my notes um, and see. Really like to do it in person, but. Me yeah. too. It will be all right. I'm just was hopping on the town's website to see if um, I could, if we, if there was any kind of protocol that was identified here. But I think that you, we've made a good point. We're gonna have to um, refine, refine our wording a little bit because we may not be able to provide social distancing. We definitely, um, the town is, or, and or the school department is probably gonna be still requiring masks. 
Because um, the schools aren't requiring social distancing. They're requiring masks, but they're not requiring social distancing. I don't believe down at the um, Galvin. No. There wasn't still a three foot rule. No. Is that gone now? Um, no... It's suggested, but it's not required. And six feet if, if eating is involved is suggested, but not required. What was that again, Levon? Six feet what? If food or if people don't, I can't be masked because of food or eating, then it's six feet is the suggestion, but there's no requirement. So the kids in the cafeteria are sitting six feet apart from each other as they eat? At my school they are, I don't know at every school. I don't think they are at, at my elementary. I'm pretty sure they're right next to each other based on the fact that if if you're at a lunch table and one of the kids gets COVID, everybody at that lunch table is identified as a close contact. Um, so I, I think that that's not happening, at least at one elementary school. Okay, so some interesting points. Well, we should, um, does anybody, Lois, do you know if Steve Mayo is still doing his Friday COVID? Um, I don't meetings? know, I could probably find out. I know one of the um, people on um, town council is having a meeting. She meets, um, on Wednesday, I'm not sure the time. Um, I'm forgetting her name, but I, I, I know who she is. But um, I had a couple of other um, thoughts. Sure. Uh, and I may be way, way off the page, but um, I don't know between now and, um, and April, you may possibly have to check with the health department where if things get worse rather, rather than better, I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm just trying to like cover your, and then the other thing is um, regarding this, um, uh, this, we were having um, intelligent lives. I couldn't come out yet. Um, anyways, um, you may want to consider possibly inviting Bill Renault. No, um, yeah, Bill could probably get some, you know, you're talking about people with disabilities. Uh, he may be able to get some signs like to put out by Galvin for people that do have problems getting in and out of the building, that type of thing, that might be something to look what into. What kind of signs are you thinking? I'm talking about for, for people to get um, extra um, HP. The parking? Oh, extra yeah. handicap parking. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Good idea. <laughs> um, because I know there's obviously there is handicapped parking, but um, if they could be put out extra signs, right? Okay, well, cones, cones. I used the wrong word. <laughs> they do that on election day, right? They usually right. have, yes, right. have but where this is going to be at night, and um, you know, it'll be done down by the like the front door so that type of thing to get in and out and there's um, a big section there that they could block off too right if they have to okay i've got it on my list and um but the um, I'll mention that to bill i don't i don't mean to say well well if something if there are changes 
uh, like with the health department and things getting worse, hopefully not it'd be better than worse. Um, you might not. I, I think weekly probably you'll be having more more uh, information like from the health department or I can find out from the um, CMA's office, not necessarily him, but whether there's any more things that we should be looking into. Well, that we are registered with the town to use that, right? Any any activities that are using uh, the school facilities have are registered. So if they are going to start to uh, eliminate these activities, then right. we will we will definitely get an yeah we will definitely right. get an email. We'll just, probably hear about just, it uh, before, but yeah, it's just something I came up with. Just thinking ahead, like you have to like plan ahead before you can really, you know, I'm just thinking about the people that, yeah, this is going to go great. And, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be in the negative. I'm trying to be in the positive. That's why I brought other things up just to get, you know, pointers that way. But, um, you know, just yeah. trying to like, anything this is it is all subject to change yeah well, right that's, that's what's what I'm happening to, so yeah we, that's what i'm we, trying to say but nicely <laughs> you know i you know i i don't want to be a negative but i'm just trying to bring, bring up points that could be helpful rather than not yeah well we you know we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and forge ahead but yep we have to be prepared that yeah, anything too. is possible. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, it's eight thirty. So I don't want to keep people any longer. Um, so let's talk about some of the actions before our next meeting. Where those of us who have been assigned to reach out to these employers, uh, will we will all do that. Um, I'll read through the information that Bill Renault sent me it, um, and work with Jen McDonald to see what it is we have to do to get this registration set up because I really do think that that's the next big thing that needs right. to be done. We talked about the handout and the bookmark, a program for the event. Um, Janice, you've kind of got that on your plate. How are you feeling about that? I didn't think I would burn. Um, I thought I'd mute again. Um, now that we have that lovely flyer, I think that I, I wanted to wait to kind of coordinate it with the flyer. So it would sort of be in the same genre. So I can definitely work on that. And I will, um, next time we meet, bring you uh, a mock-up, we're just literally looking to say Commission on Disabilities and have the QR code, uh, Wakefield Commission on Disabilities, um, maybe put the town seal on that as well so it kind of coordinates yeah. and do it in um, on some kind of maybe uh, white with red in the background. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I can do a mock-up. wheels are turning. <laughs> yeah, I can do a mock-up. And uh, my daughter does tons of graphic design and all that. So I will probably reach out to her to make it look good. <laughs> and then um, I can show it to you the next time we okay. meet. All right, so we should, um, yeah. So at our next meeting, we, we should have started to chip away at some of the big things, which is seeing how the, um, folks we're going to reach out to regarding the panel feel whether we're getting a positive response and people are going to be interested in doing that or not um, because that's something we want to know early on and then you know the registration we need to get going i would say that um you know i would say in february is when we want to kind of hit the ground running with the flyers um in in our advertising in starting to get people registered 
that that makes sense because mm -hmm. that will give us you know February March or even mid February we probably need a good two months <clears throat> in order to get the word out and constant reminders so yeah I'm curious as to how many people are going to be interested <laughs> I have no sense Paula, do you know of those organizations that have presented Intelligent Lives? How um, it seems really, like? yeah, very quite greatly um, from like people who've had like twelve to twenty people to people who've had like two hundred people. Um, it just seems to be like the kind of the demographic and the publicity piece, right? Um, you know, I think it's one of those things that once people are there, they love it, but it's the the getting there, the getting, getting there. people and there. You know what? And the whole, this whole COVID thing could be a detect, you know, if, if, if we were doing this in September, it would have been one thing. And now, you know, see, now given where we are with the, with the pandemic again, you know, people are again in a different place just because of you know the numbers are rising and people are picking and choosing what what they're going out in public for agreed i think but you know like south africa and england the omicron you know kind of it, i don't think we've peaked yet but i do think right. that by the time this shows like lorna said hopefully omicron will be gone as long as there's no new variants hopefully we'll be more in the clear that's right. that's what the scientists are saying so i'm hopeful <laughs> that's what we can get doing. a bunch of covid at home tests and we can give everybody a free covid <laughs> box of free covid tests that will bring everybody i was just going to say maybe we set up a drive through in the parking lot at um you know <laughs> from you know three to five come <laughs> and get your covid test or whatever yeah who knows where we'll be with that. But, okay, does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about? I just wanted to mention briefly the um, ARPA funds for the town of Wakefield. I went okay. to the um, meeting a couple of weeks ago about the ARPA funds, that's the American Rescue Plan. Um, and how they're going to be distributed, and it's a it's a it's a good sum of money. Um, it's like forty million dollars. It's kind of like a once in a generation um, amount of money, and the town has about four years to spend it. Um, and so what we were doing was just going through. There was I believe there was like twenty people. We were just going through the priorities and what people wanted to see. Um, and then it would go to town council and they would ultimately vote. Um, you know, but things like housing, um, creative housing options for people with disabilities. I know we've talked about kind of the limited public housing options for people with disabilities, senior citizens before um, that came up. You know, some of the, um, some of the like sidewalks came up as a conversation, but I, I think that um, it sounded like from um, from Steve Mayo that, you know, in terms of like getting the roads done, that there there's already money earmarked for those things. And there's um, money earmarked for kind of water quality and things like that as part of the annual town budget, whereas not every town in America, you know, might have that same advantage. And we have pretty good at internet access. So that's not where we have to spend the money. So where do we want to spend the money? And um, I certainly advocated for people with disabilities and like the housing and employment and a variety of other opportunities. Um, but I just didn't know if that was something that, you know, as a commission, I know we can only do so much. Um, but I just thought it was interesting to learn how much money there was. And um, Paula, do you think that any of that money could possibly go towards that erection of the swing that everybody's asked for at the uh, park for the- Oh, for, absolutely. Uh, 
you know, because that seems to be just stuck in limbo somewhere. And and I know that um, Lois and um, and yeah, that's Dan, a good point. Lois and Dan have been Lois and Dan have, have been yeah. advocating for this for some time, and um, I'm just wondering if that's something that can finally come to fruition here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And they were kind of telling us to dream big. So I think the swing is possible, but I think even uh, like a more adaptive, you know, like an uh, additional play structure that was adaptive maybe to somebody who was, um, you know, non-ambulatory, um, you know, is a possibility. There's just, there's a significant amount of money. Um, and so it just seems to be kind of who, and this was just my impression, you know, that um, they're going to take in all options, but obviously whoever kind of advocates the loudest has the best chance. Right. Um, Do you know when their next meeting about this? This was just the, this was, I was on the, I believe the 16th of December and it was just a one, one time deal. And it will, they were going to take these um, like 20 topics and take them, um, to town council where they would kind of be debated. So I don't know, I assume that the next place it will be is town council. I think they were gonna get, try to get some more input from the community at large, you know, like another um, kind of like they've done for the Envision Wakefield, um, just some surveys. Can we pay you know, for a, a, a door opener for the, the post, office. post office with this? I wonder if it would be helpful, so kind of like to, for all of us to think about something like something that's so, we have, there's so much ARPA money out there um, and it's one-time thing. It's a one-time thing. So it's, they're not gonna hire a new person with this money because it's gonna be gone probably by September, 2025 is they probably have to spend it by then. And that's when we have to spend all ours. But uh, so we're telling all our programs to think about one-time projects and things that you need. Are there, um, so is there any, like does Bill Renault have any disability access um, equipment that he wants to purchase for the town? Um, I love the idea of getting the swing with this money. I'm wondering if, if we might come up with a list of suggestions and then write a letter from mm -hmm us to yeah. the town council saying, you know, you're looking to spend $40 million or well, we've got an idea for, you know, 10,000 of that $40 million and, and ask Bill too. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll send Bill an email. That'd be great. That we had this discussion and um, get some feedback from him and then communicate it to you folks. And maybe we need him to be on a, you know, on our, a Feb February meeting, we can have him because he's good. He emailed me earlier today. Do you need me on the call tonight? And I said, no, we really don't have anything that we wanted to discuss. So mm -hmm. he'll come on if we need him. But in the meantime, he might be able to, you know, we can communicate by email and still get the information yeah, yeah. back and forth. Lois, stuff. do you have? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm not sure what you, you people know that Maureen Butt is our liaison right. to the C CDI. So you might want to consider, and I, I had mentioned, I think Wednesday night at the library, she's going to be there. I'm not sure the actual time, but I can find out. Yeah, like Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday, Thursday I'm not Thursday. Thursday. I, I'm sorry. So is this just Four her, like she's there for people to come and talk to her? Right, right. Yes, and she's the liaison for us. So she yeah. she's on the the board. So that's even a a higher. She listens. Uh, she listens. You know to what's going on, and she's already talked to myself regarding the CDI, and um, so you may want to consider talking to her. Also, well, what we'll do is once we um, we'll talk to Bill and see if he's got any items that he that he's going to throw out there, um, 
we need to have that. I'll go back and look at our to-do list to see what we've had on there, but um, yeah, definitely this swing, if that's something that they'll cover. And um, right, right. we need to start making some noise about housing. We we definitely need to oh, start yeah. that. Um, I have one thing to add about that. Um, so I, I think it was Board of Appeals meeting that I was listening to and um, the Crescent Street 40B project that's going up, you know, behind mm -hmm. Brightview. Right. Um, that I believe is going to have 40 units. And I think 18% of the units are going to be um, built as wheelchair accessible units. So about seven of those units with 40B, they have to, they have to have a higher percentage of the units accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where, I mean, it's, it's you know, still a long ways down the road, but uh, just FYI, there are seven units in that. I have kind of, I'll, I'll, I kind of been in with the, uh, Zoning board, this was the zoning board because uh, my spouse is on it. So this is why I hear all those meetings and I've heard them all for the last two years. So <laughs> I, um, he like had put it on pause and said, you want me to ask about the accessible units? I'm like, yeah, ask about the accessible units. So anytime we want to get that slipped in, yeah. we're gonna, we can make sure that happens at least for the zoning board. I'll just say, here's, here's the script, ask all of this so we'll have you know, advocacy in that way through having it. And that's how I found out that I think I, and I did, I did the math. I don't understand how it's 18% because there is no 18% of 40 that comes out to be a whole number, um, but it's about seven units. Okay. So that would be good. Um, and I have the name of the person at, for the head of the lake project of was that Forbes and Forbes or whatever that is, that that's finally going to be coming up to uh, address how many units are going to be there. They keep making it a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, right. but now I think they've addressed a bunch of the extraneous issues like traffic and all that stuff. So they'll start to actually address how many units are gonna be in that. Um, that is not 40B, that's probably gonna be really expensive places to live, um, but they'll have to build some that are accessible and some that are, can be adapted to be accessible. So they build um, the, like the bathroom is able to handle putting grab bars in. So the wall has to be built so that it can, it won't, the grab bar won't come off if you uh, install it. So they're, it's ready to be installed as accessible units, but they're not necessarily built. They don't have all of the equipment to be accessible at the time that they are built. But we'll follow up on that. We'll find out, we'll keep finding out more about as that progresses, because that's still a ways, probably a couple of years down the road as well. And, and uh, that's great. Is, what is the definition of accessible? We talk like it just means somebody who's in a wheelchair can get in and out, but what does accessible really mean? Well, it will be, it will be for, um, it will, it will be wheelchair accessible, meaning wider doorways and you know front controls on the stove, and um, but it will also likely mean that it will be ready equipped or already equipped for somebody that has a sensory disability. So it will probably the door number. There will be the whole building will have braille, like in the elevator and all of that, because that will be required for ADA. But that unit might be have additional things that would be available for people with sensory disabilities. But most of the time it means um, wheelchair accessible and built for somebody who has uh, no ability to transition themselves in and out of the wheelchair. So building for somebody who has the most significant level of mobility disability usually makes it accessible for everybody who has um, less significant mobility disabilities. So uh, handrails, grab bars, um, lower counters that would be accessible to a person. So there are a bunch of things that can be done 
as it is built. And then there are some things that can be retrofit into it. And I don't know if the retrofit, that's what I want to find out. So what does it mean when it's ready to be retrofitted? I, I know it means it's got the, whatever the blocking or whatever it is that they have to put in the wall. So you could install a heavy duty um, grab bar and it won't just fall off the wall. So I know it means those things. And, um, but I don't know if that means that you're installing that in a bathtub or if it still has a wheel in um, shower capacity, which would need to have, you'd have to have, be able to have a wheel in shower in a fully accessible unit. So, but that's a great question. And I can do some investigation to find out exactly what that means. And then we can ask them and find out if however many they are building, right? Could because you is build there more? a minimum requirement of accessibility? Because Right. Yes. They're only going to do the minimum. They're only going to do the minimum. Right. That's very likely. They're forced to do some. It's what right. that minimum is. Right. And that's why I think 40B housing has a higher minimum. So if we if there were seven out of 40 units, um, you know, close to 20 percent of the units <clears throat> are accessible and are they going to be fully accessible or are they going to be ad adaptable to become accessible? So we should find out. I hope that they're fully accessible to give more options for housing for folks. So we'll keep asking. Yeah, no, that's wonderful information. I think what I'm thinking of is just kind of like more um, kind of creative options, almost like they have it, is it the, the Lincoln School or, um, where there's, you know, like four um, like bedrooms and kind of like a shared common area. Um, just for people with all kinds of different abilities who can live on their own, but kind of seek that kind of social mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. stimulation or social interaction with others kind of throughout the day. They don't need maybe a, a, a traditional group home, but um, something like that. And, you know, just where there's this kind of pot of money that we most likely will never see again, you know, mm -hmm. do we try to put some of those ideas um, into That'd practice. I don't know. My, my friend's son, um, progressive disability and been fully, fully using a wheelchair since he was probably about eight. Um, what she was seeking was that. She was looking for a place that was uh, accessible, that a group of young people could move into that also had a room where they could hire an assistant um, who could, because these are folks with pretty significant mobility disabilities and, you know, have a, a live-in room that you could, it could be shared by um, whoever is uh, staffing. It, it would be, you know, the personal hire um, PCA that could be available, but have a room. Um, right. So yeah. just that kind of creativity, I think, is a great idea, I think. And it was almost impossible. It was she didn't find it. So she quit work because she uh, had no ability to once her son graduated. There was, there was I hear no that place. a lot from families, I feel mm -hmm. like that, you know, and I feel like more and more families are interested in the creative options. And um, it seems like there's even more kind of long term funding for things like that it's just kind of you know how do you build that into a building mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and you know maybe that's like a, a bigger vision than the, the ARPA funds or either yeah. you know those projects but just something to kind of contemplate well why could we get the people doing the 40b housing to think about not just individual units for one person or two people you know uh more, I don't know if they're all one bedroom units or if they're two, but think about the possibility of having a four bedroom unit that could be um, occupied by people with disabilities and that would meet some of the 40B requirements. I think that, I don't, right. think, it's too, I don't think it's too late to bring that up. The building is still in their imagination. So let's help, let's help them imagine. One at the head of the list. Yeah. yeah, I I agree. We but you know what? We need to be able to consult with with um 
with some of these, you know, people who have already done this before. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure there's got to be organizations, right? Oh, there um, are. There's like three of or something yep. that have directed yep. this before. We need, we don't know what we don't know. Right. Right. Our vision is limited because we don't know. But if we mm -hmm. were able to talk to somebody or see examples of something, then we really could be able to be really specific of what we we want one of those in that building at the head of the lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. One of those at that building at the head of the lake. Yeah, especially because supposedly has Sorry, they're gonna Marie. have they're gonna have little store what I read recently, little stores in the bottom, right? Yeah. So maybe a con maybe a not a grocery store, but a convenience store. So people yeah. wouldn't have to leave the site if they needed stuff. And yeah. that would be a perfect spot for a unit like that. Yep. Yeah. And a restaurant is going in. And a restaurant and shuttle shuttle downtown. Into the train. Into the train, right? Yeah, so, I think that's, that's the thing. I think asking is, uh, you know, it's, to me, it gives them a feather in their cap as the developers that are clearly doing this to make money. I mean, there's, they are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart at right. all. So if there's a way to say, as a town, if you're doing this and as a commission, um, we'd throw our support in and, you know, speak up on behalf of doing this and it would speak well of the project. It's not gonna hurt you, it's gonna help you. So I don't know, I think, I think it's worth looking into. I could be wrong that all the plans are made and it's, that it's never gonna change, but I think we should ask. I think yeah, we should, I'll find out who to ask. And Paula, it, it, that group of four would be would get money through their uh, voucher, right? Their eight A, whatever it is, voucher or their. They um, so yeah. Some people, um, I know people who live in like the the forty B, and so it's more that the person with the disability actually owns it. Um, they could get it through like a Section Eight voucher. Eight, um, that seven, would have to yeah. go through like Wakefield Housing most likely, um, but you know, then they're only paying a third of their income um, it, for, for housing. Um, and like Autism Pathways does some like amazing stuff um, around creative options like this. And then Specialized Housing out of Arlington also has, um, they, they were started with parent, by parents before, um, mm state agencies were like endorsing these kind of more creative options. Um, they have some great, great options um, that have worked and have worked for people for 20 and 30 years. So um, mm. they're definitely another, you know, uh, place to look at. Maybe those are the folks we have to come in and chat with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk right. A little bit about, you give us ideas basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are obviously there is public comment because these are all public meetings. So, right. Uh, and sometimes there are tons and tons of public comment, and sometimes it's the same people over and over again, just right. like meeting. And uh, and sometimes, you know, board of zoning board of appeals, it's uh, oftentimes individuals because they're asking for things about their houses. So it's just one particular family that's there to make comment. But if we as a group start to ask these questions, I think um, I think we should be listened to. So I think it's, uh, let's go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Just I love the creative that's housing cool. ideas. That's really, it's a really good idea. And if it's been going on, it's not like it's a brand new idea, apparently. It's been going on for 20 or right, 30 years. Right, and that's what we need, things to point to. Yep. Right, that we're not just dreaming these up in our head that these things already exist. You can go here, you can see it and have something to replicate. Mm -hmm. So, I like that. I wonder how, if we did four units, if, if the accessible units were each going to be single rooms, if putting four of them together would still count as four units, even though it's within one section. 
So I don't know how that would work, but then what would be the difference to them in doing it as four units versus it actually would probably be cheaper because you would not need four kitchens. Um, right. You know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. You know, almost like dormitory kind of right. suite. It's like a suite. Um, so, and then, you know, people will have the opportunity to not get along with their roommates, like almost everybody. So it will be, you know. And, you know, if we could, if we could have conversations with these organizations who probably know of families who are looking for this, mm. we might be able to identify occupants before the thing was even built. Ooh, that's a really good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think we could even, you know, contact some of the, like the, I'm, you know, I'm thinking like GBS, I bet if you contacted them in Wakefield, they could probably tell you 30 people right off the top of their head who are like looking for these creative options. I can think of 10 people off the top of my head. Um, so I think that the people are definitely there. Um, not that it should be specific to, to people who receive supports from GDS, but. I think it's They're a great place to start, but saying that, listen, we could we could fill it for you before it's filled. Right. Okay, well, hmm. I'm on the cab for DDS, so I will find out at our next meeting. Um, hmm. I'll, th I'll throw it out there and see. Um, not sure when that meeting is, but it's gonna be coming up, so. That's a great idea, that's a great idea. Awesome discussions today, ladies. Okay, so let's plan our next meeting is, what is it, 17th? 17th. Yep, 17th, okay. So we'll see you then. Um, we'll communicate in between. And um, yeah, let's, let's stay chatting about as people, um, you know, advance on their actions. If anything comes up, if you need any support, just reach out. The meeting on the 17th, also at 7 p.m., the usual time? Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. And Lorna will send out an agenda. Right now, it will be basically focusing on intelligent lives. Um, and we'll have to, pub you know, we have to publish it publicly and and go and do all of that. But um, that will be the intent right now, in case, unless something comes up. Would someone like to make a motion to adjour adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. And second. Second. Yeah. Ask second. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Good night. Um, we'll chat in a couple of weeks um, and stay healthy. Thank you.